Vince dead. So a lady offered me $50 to write a poem about horses. And given that's about five years' wages for the average poet, I looked at her opportunity. And it had to have movement and it had to have spirituality. So this is what we came up with. And she never turned up and paid me. <laughs> so I kept, I kept the poem and poverty. A horse tale. Late afternoon in hilly terrain, a herd of wild horses in circle around, large eucalyptus tree dripping from rain. An old mare lies prostrate on ground chest rising and falling periodically with drawn out wheezing sound. The herd watches her stoically, not mourning, but with resignation to a situation occurring naturally. Sentinels watching over, reaching final destination. Guardians against crows roosting overhead. Prowling predatory canine shadows awaiting termination of the free life she had led. The mare approached her return to the sky where the spirit of the horses were bred. All of this she was aware of. She would soon join the horse god Equinine, appreciated the herd's devotion and care, her thoughts encompassing divine, the communal togetherness and underlying memories of her family line. Her first memory. Two hearts united in birth's duress, one in maternal pain, hers in confusion. Her understanding love of belonging with first lick of tenderness. Her mother, that birth, was a temporary delusion, masking the joy of having a child. Hearts of mare and foal, a lifelong fusion. The sounds, smells, noises, sensations piled into her young mind trying to absorb it all. The realisation of her existence in wild at mercy of environment's survival call. Trying to stand on infirm legs unstable, conspiring with gravity to make her fall. Nuzzling for teat, for milk in nature's stable, providing life-giving nourishment to make her body fit and able. Frisky foals frolicking in gay merriment, running, bucking and kicking through spring, learning to be horses with herds encouragement, lazy moments lounging, listening to nature sing, while watching birds and clouds in sky, plying the older horses with endless questioning of how, what, where and why. Maturing to be fillies and colts, galloping as if they could fly, with turns, spins, jumps and bolts, dreaming across the countryside, like living, breathing lightning bolts, sweat of exertion down their sides, nostrils flaring, manes and tails flying, muscle movements visible beneath sweaty hides. The excessive exertion seemingly denying the end of youthfulness would ever come. Adult arrived without and even trying. Bodies motivated by hormonal hum. A biological clock slowly ticking with imperative command striking childhood dumb. Fillies endlessly grooming and licking to attract the stallion's glance. The cult's martial combat display and kinking. Towards the day they would fight to lead, the herd as head stallion had the right to fornicate and breed. A natural process looking no rebellion. Her courtship contained no lust, contained lust but no love. A brief chase, then stallion riding pillion, penetrating her with his horse head's shove. Then she was discarded as a job done, as he sought another conquest to get above. 
Gestation was, in her opinion, not fun. She missed the pleasure of running free. But the birth of a foal was like a rising sun, a brightening realisation of the purpose of we, a sharing of life's seasons with other horses that ended here beneath the eucalypt tree. She thought of the legend of life's sources, how horse god Equinine had come to earth, his unleashing of life forces that had given the horse her birth, seen horses spread out globally around planet's girth. The mare's life stopped internally and she felt herself begin to ascend, to start her afterlife eternally in heavenly pastures without end. Above the clouds was Equinine with her long lost family and friends, a spiritual herd of horses in realm divine, the rumble of their galloping, the thunder, sparks from clashing hoofs, lightnings, jagged lines, rain, the tears of those left under, the heaven of the horse herd. Thank you.